I have a new computer which I'm not going to show you because it doesn't work yet. The reason why it doesn't work is because it comes in four different pieces each of which needs its own 6 volt power supply which I don't have. Now in a previous video I built this, well bodged together, this epic bench power supply out of an old PC power supply. The problem is that while this generates 3.3, 5 and 12 volts, it doesn't generate the 6 volts this thing needs. So what I'm going to do today is fairly crudely and shoddily make a 6 volt power supply for it, based around one of these DC to DC converter modules, one of these plastic boxes, and lots of these 4mm banana plugs because banana plugs are awesome. This is not going to be particularly complex. Essentially, all I need to do is to stick these in this box, put this inside the box, and wire it all up. I also have a little self-powered voltmeter that would be great to put in the box as well, if I can manage it. So, most of what I'm going to be doing is drilling holes. So, this is not going to be technically complex. Now these power supply modules are great things. They cost a oh, franc or two each. They are adjustable. They are reasonably efficient. You can feed them any reasonable DC voltage and out will come any other reasonable DC voltage. Uh, and they're really good for this sort of thing. This one's rated at 2 amps which I frankly don't believe but we'll see how it goes. I can always upgrade it to a heftier one if needed. Now the banana plugs are going to be fitted into the box and the, the actual plugs themselves of course go into the box. Now there's enough clearance so I can have four sets of pairs in a row on the top for the output and I also need some inputs as well, which will come from the 12 volt supply of the big power supply. But I need to make sure that they don't actually, you know, touch each other. It looks like there'll be enough space so that if I put these near the edge, then these ones can go in the middle. Uh, that should be fine. So let's do some measurements and see how all well this goes together. So the box is 70, call it 70 millimeters by uh, 50. These are 11 millimeters across, so if I place these one centimeter from the edge, get another one out, both sides. That should be fairly robust and will provide how much space do we have? We can put those together fairly close together. Okay. Well, these have to go in the side. So, where did the red ring go? Red ring, guard ring. So these can go next to each other, fairly close together. And then these will go in set. Okay, that should work. So the first thing is I need to drill holes for the input on the edge. Um, and it's not actually going to be red and black for the input. It's going to be yellow and black to remind me to plug it into the 12 volt supply.
That'll do. Okay. Drill. So first we need to do a pilot sole. Of course I have nothing like a drill press, so what you're going to see is mostly an unfocused blur of me failing. Let's put the drill in straight, shall we? Okay. Right, so these are going to be my pilot holes. Let me just double check the positioning again. That looks okay. So we take out the pilot drill. Let me see if this is actually focusing. And loop. And we use the big drill bit. Yeah, that's actually taking longer than I thought, so let's try something else. I'm just going to just look for another drill bit. Okay, so that one is actually a wood drill bit, so I'm going to try the plastic one instead. Sorry, the uh, HSS one is designed for metal. Let's see if this works better on the plastic. The tips are different shapes, so let's have a go. Oh, yeah. Uh, work way too well. So it's actually cut most of the way through the hole with just that. So let's go back to this one and clean things up a bit. Because it's got wedged. I have to pick some of this stuff off. Yuck. Anyway, that's done. Okay, it's a bit messy, but nothing you can't deal with. Okay. Now, this was going to be... This was the input. It was going to be black and yellow. And in fact, now I remember, I am using one of... These, which is a different model of banana plug to these. So, let us just hope that, yeah, it's still compatible. Seems to be solid. Hmm. 
interesting. It's supposed to go in. Sudden horrible thought. Did I buy the wrong size of banana plug sockets? It should be standard. But no, they're not going in. Those ones work, but the yellow one doesn't. I think I may have cocked that up. Is there such a thing as a three mil banana plug? Uh, oh well. Luckily I have enough of these ones that I can make this work. This will just have to be red instead. Don't really think I can take these back. Never mind. It'll look, it'll look neater like this anyway. I just need to remember that the input needs to go into the 12 volt line. Nothing bad will happen if I plug it into the 5 volt line and the big power supply, it just won't work. These little DC converters will accept almost anything and emit almost anything, but of course they can only lower the voltage, not raise it. So this is a fairly cheap one that I got at the same place as the others. This is a, a banana plug I've had for ages. So if it was just one of them, I would put it down to like just poor tolerances, but there does appear to be a metal ring inside the these plugs. So I have a feeling that these are just very badly made. Given that they cost like 40 rapin each, I'm not very surprised. Okay, anyway. We have our input. And now we want output. Now this is 70 mil across and we want four sockets in a row. So... 70 divided by, that's five intervals, 70 divided by five. Right. Now in the other axis we have two rows, so I could do it by bisecting, but of course we need to make sure that the let me find the other banana, more banana plugs. We need to make sure that when the plugs go in they don't hit these. So in fact the spacing is going to be here. So I can do that by measuring the distance here and halving.
goes in there. All right. So now we change drill bits again, back to our pilot drill bit, which is here. So now I am going to actually remove these two sockets again and then go off camera and clean the whole thing up with IPA because I want to get the lines off. I want it to look reasonably good when it's done. I mean, it's something I'm making so there is a limit as to how good it can be. Get these things off. Okay. right back. Well the IPA didn't get it all off but good enough. So uh, because I'm having trouble with the drilling I'm actually going to try using a rather smaller drill bit this time just to see if that works. I can then go through again with the big one. So let's see how well this actually works shall we? Once I've done all the drilling then I can get on to the bits that I can actually know how to do more or less. Okay. Yeah, I'm not really very happy with this. What I think is going to happen is it's going to get most of the way through and then it's going to jam again, uh, wrench it out of my hand and possibly, you know, end up slamming against the vice. Yeah, let's, let's downscale a bit more, shall we? So if I use a really small bit and then work up. Maybe that will actually work better. Yeah, that's better. curly bits of plastic. Okay, move up to the... I don't know how big how big this bit is. The number's rusted off. I've had these bits for a long time. Better, but not much. That works. Yeah, I need a drill press. Wow, okay. Maybe I don't. That's not actually cutting, that's just sort of. That's not drilling, it's just sort of cutting its way through. 
It's effective and it's producing reasonable holes. Okay, we have holes. So that would be the bulk of the drilling. There is actually one more hole that I do want to put in, which is for the voltmeter. Ideally, I would cut a square hole and mount this thing from the back, but I really don't think that my hardware wrangling skills are good enough for that. So I'm just going to put a hole in for the wires and then stick the thing on the outside. So in fact the wires go here-ish. It's not going to be precise, I'm not even going to bother. So one more drill hole. Then we get to start assembling it. So, so these wires go down here. And it will stick on using high tech sticky pads here and tell me what voltage the regulator is set to. Okay, right, time to put these back on again. So we'll start with So I have a big bag full of banana plug stuff. Now which of course I know that half of them are not working. So let's pull out the ones that do. And start assembly. Now I look at the design, I could have, uh, I was intending, they would, hang on, ah, I'm an idiot. So I used the small size but didn't go through with the big 9mm drill and make the holes big enough to actually put the banana plugs in. Uh, and what I was going to say, however, is... These ones go down flush. The, you see the plastic here is in two parts. And the, the inner plastic ring goes on the inside. I can actually mount them this way. So they sit clear of the rest of the box. And then the plug doesn't stick as far through. So I wonder whether that might be preferable. It would save me having to make the holes bigger. But no, I think I'll do this one properly. So. Hopefully this shouldn't be too hard. So 9mm drill, 8, 9.
Yeah, that was horrible. I have mentioned I want a drill press, right? Okay, so let's clean that up a bit. Right, so... All annoyingly fiddly. I hope the thing works once I'm done with it. I mean, there's nothing particularly complicated here. The electronics module is foolproof. Although I don't know what happens if you connect up the input supply backwards. Which with banana plugs is actually possible, though you have to be pretty careless to do so. And I do have a diode as I was thinking of running in line with the input. Uh, but it's pretty low rated so I may just not bother with it. up better. My holes are, yeah, nowhere near each other. Uh, yeah, the whole drilling process with this plastic, just wrenching it around, you're not going to get decently lined up holes doing that. I mean, I'm sure you could if you knew what you were doing, but I don't. Again, if I had a drill press, So that's most of our box. The plugs, oh dear, that's dreadful. We plug this side into the bench power supply and this side into whatever it is I want to power. So now I need to wire it up. So at the bottom of the box, apparently only has three screws, four screws. So it will fasten together like this. This will go in here. So now I need to just wire this up. So if you assume it goes this way, let's put the ground on the bottom. The module has four solder tags, in positive, negative, out positive, negative. So we 
we'll go in here and the wiring should be straightforward okay so what we need for this is the soldering iron some solder some wire is stranded wire because it wants to be flexible um, I need some water and then we should be ready to start assembling it all right so the soldering iron is warming up so let us get us some wire have this wonderful automatic wire stripper. It's wonderful when it works, it means it's wonderful about four-fifths of the time. I've never been particularly good at stripping wire with wire cutters. I mean, I can do it, I just don't really want to. got this terrible little vice for randomly holding stuff which is you know what you use vices for because soldering would be so much easier with more hands so so I can solder the pads uh, Get the solder onto the pads, I can tin the pads. Um, come on. Two. slack because I'm going to be taking the lid off this thing a lot. Tin. Okay, this is input positive, so you solder it on this end. In the tag. And you know what? I'm going to do the black side now. So what's happened here is that it grabbed the wire and has pulled it through the insulation. So I'm actually going to have to cut off the other end. 
some more wire there. So now a rather shorter piece of wire than I was originally hoping. Is that going to be good enough? So the black was going to be in the downside, so in fact that's going to be too short because it is not going to reach as far as I wanted. This is why I strip the ends before removing it from the reel. So some more wire. Right, that one worked. is to in negative so those pads have not tinned at all the solder is just not sticking to them. It's better. That one is stuck. And that one is stuck. Right. So I think I've screwed this up again. wire is not long enough. No, nah, it'll do. But I do want to adjust the position of the solder tag a little. Likewise this one. So it will go like this. The output side will connect to these here, but these need to be bridged together. Um, what's the best way of doing this? So. 
So this little piece of black wire will help here. So we tin the ends. Will it? Is this too long? So what I was thinking was to connect the two pads together like this. But we're actually also going to need to solder the patch wires to the module itself. And the little voltmeters, own wires. Which will be coming through this hole here. Trying to solder multiple things onto the same solder tag is always a pain because it's, you solder one thing on, it comes off. So, what do I have here that might be useful? Ah, here is in fact my salvage wire. I've got, got lots of pieces of little, quite thick, decent wire, so let's and these actually came from the power supply pro project A little piece of wire, just the right length to stand that. to be just a touch shorter. That has managed to pull some of the wire through the insulation. So, can we pull that back? No, never mind. It'll be fine. joint. That's it. And what's the side of this end? In this side of the wire? I think I did. Uh, yeah, that's made contact, but it's a, that's really not my best work.
Yeah, that's actually dreadful. So let's try and do something a bit cleverer on this side. And each solder tags have handy holes in them, so if we line up the holes, like so, and get a nice piece of red salvage wire. See, I can put the wire in the hole, and that will hold it mechanically in place, even if I have to remelt the solder tag. Which I will need to do to put the other bits of wire on. Can we push that in here? Yep. Yeah, it's not working so well actually. I don't think my wire is quite long enough. Solder, um, let's tin this all the tag. The reason for using the salvage wire rather than the new stuff is the salvage wire is significantly thicker. Not that I expect much in the way of current through this stuff, but yuck, that's dreadful. But it should at least work, just to give that a try. So now I need to connect it up to the power supply module. I do not... Yeah, that's long enough.
All right, now let's trim that very slightly. So this goes on here. Easily. Okay, and now I need the other bit of black wire. And check this side of the floor. That is black and red, which is long enough but the wrong colour. I don't believe I've got any suitably long black, to be honest. Okay. Uh, yeah, this has to be the longer side, so no, I don't have anything. I just have to use some of the new stuff. This solder's on here. Try to remember how far up this all goes. Going to go like this, so this end solders down onto this pad here. Now, this is going to be tricky because there's something already soldered there. This is the one I actually hooked under, so it shouldn't be too difficult. So all I need to do is that. The black side, likewise, needs to go in here. But as soon as I do this, this wire will spring up. I did my best to keep the tension low. And the wire's not actually pushing down onto the solder. that goes in like this and in fact I have a suitable sticky pad to fasten it down with which I won't do just yet because I want to put the voltmeter on and make sure it works first now where did I put the voltmeter Here it is. Okay. So the voltmeter, its wires go through here. And let's put them both the same side of the black wire in there. As usual, black goes to black, red goes to red, so let's 
chop these off to a more manageable length. Strip. Strip a bit longer than that, shall we? Okay. And that one. Tin. These voltmeter modules are awesome. They're completely self-powered. That is, they use the voltage they're measuring to run their own electronics. So you just like hook them up and they work. Below about three volts, they all go a bit gray. And below about two and a half, they don't work at all. But for the stuff I'm doing here, they're ideal. Let's put that on here. Oops, and let's not melt our way through my nice new project box with the soldering iron. That goes on here. All right. I will use a sticky pad to stick the voltmeter down. Like so. Okay. So, let's pull out some banana plugs. Black goes to black. Red goes into yellow on the bench power supply, which you can't see but is over here. And that goes into the red banana plug. Power on. Twenty four point seven volts. We're actually looking for six, so screwdriver, adjustment screw. Wind it all the way down to There's actually a fair bit of slack in the pot here, so. But they seem to be reasonably accurate. So now I need my voltmeter. So, you may notice that this, what you're looking at here is slightly different from what you're just looking at. It turns out that my shiny new camera has a hardwired video limit of half an hour and I just went over a take. So some footage just got lost because I didn't notice it shut down. However, you saw enough to see that it all actually worked. I was in the process of hooking it up to the voltmeter to see what the actual voltage was. So I'm just going to recreate that now. I mean, I know it works because I've just made it work, but you didn't, so. Besides, it looks nicer now it's all in the box. So we hook it up, we set that to volts, we turn the power supply on. And this box registers 6.03 and my voltmeter registers 6.05. And I think that's a success. And I've got this nice little gray box. I can wire it up to my various bits of hardware, although I will need to wire up some plugs, two banana plugs, plug it into here and make it all work. And if I ever need to generate different voltages for something else, I can just take the lid off this and twiddle the pot and it will work fine. One interesting thing I want to try, however, is 
Yes, camera is in fact still recording. Now, currently it's plugged into the 12 volt line. If I unplug that and plug it into the 5 volt line, what does it do? That's actually working. How on earth is that generating 6 volts from the 5 volt line? I was really not expecting that. Uh, hang on, I need to try something. So that's actually getting 5 volts from the bench power supply. And it turns it into 6 volts. It steps up. I did not know that. That's about 3 volts. Okay, uh, I just plugged it into the 3 volt line and my power supply turned itself off. <laughs> I've just wrecked my power supply. Go me! Yeah, uh, oops. That's awesome. Um, I've probably just blown the fuse in it. Well, now I know not to do that. Um, I still have some other power supplies I can run this thing off so I can still get my stuff done. But this is the first time I've actually used my big power supply for something seriously, and I've just fried it. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to investigate this offline, I think. But yeah, the first thing I need to do is to figure out what's wrong with my big power supply. Ah, uh, it was looking like, looking like it's gone so well. Good news, my big power supply is fine. It was a self-resetting cutout. Good to know that it has a, a safety features like this. Good to know that they cut out on demand. Good to know it all actually works. And this is fine. And now I'm going to sign off properly before I break something else. Goodbye.